Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV, and I'm going to be talking to those of you who do not believe in God as the world called him. We know him as Yah or Yahuwah. But those of you who don't believe, I'm going to be talking specifically to you so-called black people. You don't believe that there is a God and that all of the stuff that we talk about is foolishness and nonsense. And you quite often tell me that I need to start reading from that book that you believe that's written by the so-called white man. OK, you're talking about the Bible saying that it's not true and blah, 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 all these things, despite all the prophecies that have come play, come to pass. OK, anyway, I'm going to be talking to you because I want you to look at things for what they really are. If you say that there is no God. If you say that he doesn't exist. Then. I need you to be realistic here. If there is no God, then we as so-called black people are finished. We are finished. Let me tell you why. We believe that, touching on another video that I did, we believe that standing up in our own power and doing things is going to get us out of our present situation. Worldwide, we have been literally enslaved both physically and mentally, we don't have enough money, power, or resources to do the things that many of you who don't believe in God claim we can do. You think that if we fight back hard enough, we will win. I'm talking physical fight. We don't have enough guns. We don't have enough money, power, or resources to do anything. We don't have any fighter jets. We don't have anything. Nothing. If you don't understand, if you don't get this, that we are in this situation that we're in by divine order. If you don't get that and you don't understand that you are just fooling yourself. I don't care how many groups we come up with. Now, we've had like the Black Panthers. We've had um, the Nation of Islam and just various other groups who have said, look, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to uh, patrol our own neighborhoods and do, and I'm not saying anything is wrong with patrolling our own neighborhoods and trying to keep order in our neighborhoods. I think that's a good idea. But when you have organizations that believe if they stand strong as a group or an organization that they're going to um, deal with the, the bigger element of the attacks against so-called black people then you are sadly mistaken that the attacks on our people are worldwide and from every direction. They're coming from the top, from the bottom, from the side, from the left, from the right, at this angle, that angle. We are surrounded by attacks. They use the legal system, the educational system, food, drink, everything. Everything. Because we just don't get it. We believe that if we do A, B, C, that we can come out on top in the land of our captivity. You might get by or you might mesh into the system or be grafted into the system. You know, the scripture says, be not conformed to this world. Many of our people have been grafted in or conformed to this world and they think, that that's going to be their saving grace. Well, no. All that's doing is just buying you a little happiness for the moment. But when it's all said and done, you are still in the land of your captivity subject to their rules. Can't move about and do anything without their permission. You can't drive a car. You can't travel to another country. Can't do anything without their permission. Can't work a job without their permission. Everything can't have a bank account without their permission because you need their ID, state ID, driver's license, whatever. Keep thinking that you can do anything without their permission. This is what I mean by the land of their our captivity. Where there are two sets of laws, the laws that are on the books and the laws that they have for us. And I'm not saying that this is the treatment that every last one of us get. I'm just saying that in general, we see that certain things apply to them that don't apply to us. 
Certain laws are for their benefit, but not for ours. This is part of the judgment of the Most High Yah that has been prophesied. So whether you believe in Yah or not, it is what it is. The truth is what it is. And you thinking that we should just rip up the Bible because you believe that just because it's been printed by white people and circulated around the world, you believe that it was their text. You have to understand that they went into Africa, they went into black lands and they confiscated, took a lot of our ancient writings, ancient artifacts. Look at how they've taken and stolen artifacts from Egypt, ancient places throughout Africa. Do you think they didn't run across any writings, any books, any text? Just like they stole the artifacts, they stole our text as well. And so a lot of our information that you see in the Bible, some of it is very clear. If you really take the time to listen and research, you will see that it was indeed our history book. These were our ancient writings. And what you see unfolding today is in that text, is in the Bible. Yes, some of it has been mistranslated. This is why we say study to show yourself approved. This is why we say you need to seek to be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh so that Yah will lead you and guide you into all truth. And he will even show you what the enemy has done, the tamperings, all of that. You don't throw it all out. You decipher it. Because what other information are you going to go by? All other information has been pr printed and produced by man too. And even so-called black scholars, when they research history, they are still reading texts that you would call the white man's text. Things that have taken place in history, they played out. They are very real. But the truth is coming forward like a flood. Even things that they've said were white in history. History is showing up itself and saying, no, no, that's not true. It wasn't even possible. These are black people. Real history is starting to show its head. Knowledge has been greatly increased in this day and time. What I'm talking about is not a racial thing. It is a spiritual thing. Very spiritual. It's not a skin color thing. It's a spiritual thing. But you have to know and understand who is who in this world. And when you begin to know and understand who is who and what has taken place in history, you can better see and understand that, yes, Elohim is real. When we see prophecy being fulfilled, yes, he is real. When we see these things taking place that were talked about in the Bible, you'll see, yes, it is real. The Most High Elohim is real. And so the whole notion of thinking that the Most High isn't real what other hope do you have? Because if you think you're going to make some missiles out of the things you find in your backyard, you think you can make nuclear weapons, you think you can make some, some weapons that are going to outdo these guns, these automatic weapons that these people have, you are delusional. You can't even buy as many as they have. Right now in America, millions of guns are are owned and we own a very small amount of that. What we need to do is get an understanding. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We understand that so many deceptions have been put out there that we have to be careful with the information that we take in. But also be realistic. We can't do anything of ourselves. If there is no God, we are finished. There is no way. I mean, look at, the, look at our track record. For the past 2,000 years, what have we been able to do? Hmm? We haven't been able to do anything to help ourselves for the past few thousand years. So what, what is your plan? Those of you who think that some, at some point we'll get strong enough and we'll have enough money and we'll have all of this stuff and we'll have... What, what are you going to do? How is that going to happen? You haven't been able to do it for thousands of years. What makes you think that you're going to be able to do it now. 
This is why it's important that we understand that this position we're in was by divine order. It has nothing to do with the things that we think it does. This is judgment on us. We are here in this land because we have been judged as a people. More specifically, the tribe of Judah. And it's going to take deliverance from the Most High Yah, or God as the world calls him. He is going to have to deliver us, just like he did our ancestors back in the Bible days. When he delivers you, you are delivered. Whom he sets free is free indeed. No doubt about it. Okay, family. With that, I will say shalom.